Hello, welcome to this Joyful Living series. I want to show you a very important element that will quickly help you to improve yourself. Follow me to the end of this video to see how it can actually do the magic for you. We all desire to become better at whatever we do, but more importantly, to become better at who we are. If you are being with someone who believes himself or herself to be perfect, to be beyond errors, you may have experienced how difficult it can be to relate with such a person. Improving oneself demands some level of humility to acknowledge the need to be receptive to good suggestions and are many able to change in order to improve on some areas of one's life. It simply means that the person understands that perfection is not just an end, but as well a process. By getting better at something, one eventually perfects the act and can still bring improvements on the process to perform the act even better. That is the way of progress in life and in every other thing. Improving oneself, especially when it involves admitting one's faults and working on them, can be a difficult task. But holding on to the efforts is shown to come with great rewards in terms of massive improvement. One major consequence of the failure to realize the need to improve oneself or the inability to give in to the demands of humility and all that is needed to improve oneself is retardation in the process of personal growth. The person is likely to consider himself or herself to be far better than what is actually the case, a kind of self-deception. This could result in losing true friends, becoming obstinate, and self-opinionated. One of the reasons that some people can't admit faults is a lack of self-awareness. Admitting one's own faults can be a struggle depending on our self-perception and the willingness to admit that we are humans. Although accepting one's errors allow people to see through our vulnerability, it frees us from the unconscious defense system that we commonly employ to protect the ego when our self-concept is challenged by a contrary event that seeks to prove how wrong we are. That gives us the opportunity to adjust our initial self-perception, which is part of growth. Being self-opinionated can also be an obstacle to accepting corrections because opinionated people tend to have just one view, which is their own view and no other. This dwarfs their intelligence because true intelligence lies in the ability to perceive life from several different angles and to be receptive to a range of views before forming one's opinion or standpoint. They don't easily give up their ideas and can be very defensive against every perceived challenge to their position. Wanting to be right at all times makes it difficult to suggest anything to a self-opinionated person. And if you must, you have to do it in secret so that the person will be the one to present the idea as coming from him or her in order to take credit for it. However we may look at it, struggling to admit our own faults doesn't really serve us well. It can negatively affect our relationships and even be detrimental to our personal growth. This is where the narrow line dividing healthy confidence and stubborn ego is led by. 
and the inability to admit it when one is strong clearly indicates on what side of the line the person operates. The reality is that no one likes correction, except those with breed the understanding of life, who have trained themselves to see correction as an opportunity to discover, through the help of others, what they may never be able to know if left alone. Such persons benefit from every correction to improve themselves. They develop the ability to engage in meaningful conversation with whoever comes around since they are open to learning. The Bible is filled with examples of people who rapidly develop themselves through openness to correction. Simon Peter quickly comes to mind. He was the leader of the apostles. In Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, we see his initial conversion at the Sea of Galilee. He was a professional fisherman. In this episode, he had labored all night with his companions, but they could not make a catch. Then came Jesus, who sat on his boat to teach the people. Afterwards, Jesus asked him to push into the deep water, let down his net for a catch. Jesus of Nazareth was known as the son of a carpenter, not a fisherman. In a normal situation, one would question his qualification to teach a professional fisherman how to catch fish. But Peter was open to accepting the words of Jesus and to try again. He said, Teacher, we have worked all night and we have caught nothing. But because you have told me to, I will let the net down. They let down the net based on the words of Jesus and not out of conviction from a professional point of view. When Peter and his companions had done this, they caught so many fish that their net started to break. From that moment, he began following Jesus, turning from being a fisherman to a fisher of men. Peter is one character among the apostles who was never afraid to step forward or try something and was very receptive to correction. Now, after three years of learning from Jesus, one would assume that Peter was now perfect. But during the trial of Jesus, Peter's weakness got hold of him, and he denied him three times. That denial was certainly a painful one for him. Luke chapter 22, verse 62, noted that he went out and wept bitterly. That is a sign of remorse that leads to true conversion, a sign of one recognizing his error. This is an important point of reflection for all who think that they have known enough or they have known so much to be faultless. There is no stage in life at which we cannot commit errors. In Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, we read Paul's account of his rebuke to Peter in Antioch for withdrawing from eating with the Gentiles on the arrival of some Jews. What is important here is the disposition displayed by Peter in accepting his error, even in public. Accepting correction can be hard. It is easy to fall into thinking that we know it all and that someone has no right to correct us. But the truth is that only a person who is truly concerned about you will take the pain to tell you the truth about certain things. And that is what Paul did to Peter. Should Peter not be open to correction, he could have sought to discredit Paul. The maturity and openness that Peter 
as the leader of the church, displayed in accepting the public correction from Paul is a big lesson, not just to leaders, but to everyone who understands the value of truth, even when spoken by a rival or an opponent. Truth is like gold. It does not matter where it is found or who is wearing it. It remains gold. Accepting correction makes you amenable to change. It makes you approachable, easy to communicate with, as people will not be afraid to tell you contrary opinion they know can be of help to you. It improves your relationship, making you a more interesting person to relate with. You learn new things about yourself and others. Experience less tension in work environments and it becomes easier for people to confide in you. When you learn to embrace corrections, you will be better at accepting and adapting to unexpected changes that could be outside of your control. And be confident in initiating changes that you consider necessary for your own self-development. Being constantly open to correction makes it easier for you to deal with any anxiety and negative emotions that may arise because you are not stuck to your own views anymore. Besides, humility associated with openness to correction inspires those around you, shaping you to be a good leader and mentor. Your awareness of life goes beyond what trends around you because you will be able to understand things more deeply given that you are open to inspiration, open to knowledge that goes beyond logic. You gain awareness, which helps you to notice things about yourself and stay grounded in reality. Some people think that being arrogant and self-opinionated keep them in control, improve their self-esteem, and make people to respect them. But in reality, being an easy person is what improves your self-esteem, gaining you love and respect from people. Besides, you only discover yourself in the context of openness. One of the most difficult persons to deal with is obviously a person that doesn't see the need to be corrected. A certain correction is something that needs to be consciously learned because it contradicts human pride. It demands discipline and could be painful, but the rewards are immense. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32 has it that those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who hates correction gains understanding. When couples, friends and colleagues learn to give and accept corrections from one another without prejudice, there will be little space for bottled anger or rancor. They will relate better and maximize the synergy between them. Being receptive to correction is a fundamental element to improve yourself and enjoy a happy life with the people around you. I wish you constant self-improvement, joyful living, and cordial relationship with the people in your life. Thanks for watching.